Welcome everybody to part two of my Super Metroid Let's Play. Um, in the last episode, we unlocked some achievements and got through the first boss. So in this episode, I'm thinking we may play through until we beat Spore Spawn. But we're going to play it by ear. See how far we get. A lot of achievements to go. So now that we have the Morph Ball and we have bombs, we can actually go down and there's a room below us. Missile upgrade. So each missile expansion gives us five more missiles to our maximum. So of course we're going to want to collect as many of those as we possibly can. Oh, that was wonderful. So one of the criticisms of the original Metroid was that farming for health and missiles was extremely difficult and time-consuming. They remedied that a bit in Super Metroid. So the enemies tend to drop what you need. Ah, first health tank. Nice. It certainly makes farming for health and missile pickups much easier. Which you'll see throughout this run. There will be times when I have to kind of farm to replenish my stock. So I'm going to open this missile door just so I don't have to do it um, later. Actually, you know what? I'll show you what's in here. So this actually leads to the end of the game. We can't go here yet, but you'll see there's a statue here. This, this represents all four of the main bosses of the game. So you have <coughs> Ridley and Kraid, and you'll, you'll see the other ones. We got a ways to go before we're, we're going to be challenging those guys, though. A lot of power-ups to get. A lot of stuff to do. Yeah, you can see they're dropping tons of missile pickups because that's... I have full health. And I need missiles. Okay, so down here, <coughs> excuse me, is the entrance to Brinstar. One of the entrances to Brinstar. What a lot of people refer to as the jungle section of Brinstar. Or the overgrown section of Brinstar. Interesting to note, Brinstar was actually the first area that you explored in the original Metroid. You never actually travel to Criteria, which was the section we were just in. You never actually see Criteria in the first game. These guys. So here's a, a gray door. So a lot of times these doors need to be opened by clearing all the enemies from a, a given room. Sometimes they remain closed until a boss is defeated. <clears throat> and there's a little sound effect that chimes. Ah, here we go. This is the map of Brinstar. Nice. Huge area. 
You can see there's multiple exits for Criteria. That little pink area was that kind of blue-ish area. That, that was the first area that we visited from Criteria, the beginning of the original game. Uh, that's where we got the Morph Ball, we got the missiles, and then came back up, fought the Space Pirates, and then ultimately got the bombs. Just to give you some spatial awareness of the map. It's really well designed. Uh, very hard to get lost in this game. Except for maybe in Meridia. Meridia is a huge complex network of passages. Um, I'm sure I may. Even, even though I've played this game a thousand times, I may end up getting a little lost in there. We'll see. Uh, I'm gonna come down here, I think, and save real quick. <clears throat> just in case. I mean, I really don't think I'm gonna die, but you never know. So we'll open both these doors. Actually, don't have enough. But I'm pretty sure at the end of this corridor here, there is a missile refresh. Killing these enemies makes the room darker. I think they would have put an achievement in for your first missile refresh point. There's also health refresh points. <clears throat> As you can see, it gets really dark. If you were to kill all those enemies, you wouldn't be able to even see the floor. I'm pretty sure I've done that over the years. Now, there is a way to go down here, but we don't have the power up. You need the power bomb to get down there, which we will be doing later. So we have to fight, we have to fight <coughs> Spore Spawn, and we'll be getting the super missiles from that, and that will kind of take us out of Brimstar for a while, and the game kind of gates you off as to not overwhelm you with places to look for items and stuff. A uh, very smart design choice. So before I fight Spore Spawn, I'm actually going to go down here and grab a couple of things. So there's a missile expansion here. And then if you bomb these obvious blocks here, you can come down and we'll be getting the charge beam. And another achievement. Sweet. I think we're up to six. And then if you bomb that with a super bomb, or a power bomb rather, there's even more hidden back there, which we can't access yet. A lot of speedrunners don't bother to get the charge beam or they wait until later. Uh, in this run, we're not really shooting for like the fastest time. Those blocks down there, those are for the grappling hook, which we obviously don't have yet. <clears throat> And that leads to another missile expansion, but once we get the super jump, we can actually get that right away um, using wall jumping. So back here's another save point. I think I'm going to go ahead and save it real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me, still kind of congested. Spawn, but you do need to destroy them to uh, get through this room. It 
So I'm not planning on sequence breaking in this run very much. There is one sequence break I do like to do, which is a small upgrade for our primary weapon. So this room traps you in here with a green door. Green doors need to be open with, can only be open with super missiles. And this is Spore Spawn. Easiest, most tedious boss in the game. So you can shoot those balls of pollen that are falling from the ceiling. And they'll allow you to refresh your health and your missiles during the fight. Honestly, if you hit that missile refresh before you come to this fight, you shouldn't have to worry about it. You can see that I can totally dodge all of his attacks if I just sit in the corner uh, in morph ball mode. <laughs> so it's kind of, uh, it's just a matter of wearing him down. It just takes a little bit of time. In the speedrunning community, he's, nor he's known as Snore Spawn, and I believe that's the achievement you get for beating him. There's a small chance that when he opens his mouth, he can do it over here in the corner. I believe that's really the only way I can get damaged in this fight. It's only ever happened to me once. Now watch, it's gonna happen in this fight. See, if he had just, like, opened it a second later, he would've stopped right on top of me. But I don't think we gotta worry about that. See, if I was over on the right side there, he would have hit me. No worries. In the remake of the original Metroid, Metroid Zero Mission on the GBA, there's sort of a Spore Spawn inspired boss fight. It's way more interesting than this one. It requires freezing an enemy with the ice beam so you can get high enough to damage him. Which is way more fun than sitting in a corner in the morph ball. If I were if I were to dock points off this game like in a review, uh oh, there it is, snore spawn. <laughs> if I were to dock points off this game in a review, it would probably be just for the fact that this fight exists the way it does. But we're through it. I do like the kind of black and white aesthetic that the rest of this room gets after you do It's atmospheric in the best possible way. And we got super missiles. I'm super, thanks for asking. Sweet. So let's move after. Let's move on to uh, Norfair. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move on to Norfair. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is a sequence break there where you can totally avoid the spore spawn fight. Speedrunners do it all the time. I don't necessarily know how to do it. I have to do my best to not get hit. I think that's the object of the game is to not get hit by all the enemies. <clears throat> okay, so this is that gate I was talking about. Like, once I go through here, I cannot come back this way for, for quite some time. Um... It may seem limiting at first, but it really does, if this is your first playthrough, a blind playthrough, it really does allow you to focus your exploration. Okay, so this part's interesting here. It actually requires a skill that is not mentioned in the game. This basically teaches you that Samus can run. 
So if um, the way I have set up the with the way I have the control set up, I set run to the A button. So to get through here, I'm just gonna hold down the run button and go. And that's it. But if you didn't know how to do that, you are stuck in this room until you figure it out, basically. And this leads us to what I like to call the, the Brinstar Tower. You have to be careful here because if you if you uh, blow up this block, there's an enemy in there that kind of acts like a Metroid. It will attach onto you and start draining your health. But we didn't have to worry about that. <clears throat> so here's a health pickup. Health refresh, rather. We don't need that right now. So once we get past this part, we will be uh, heading down to no Upper Norfair. And here is where I'm going to do my first sequence break. So normally to get up top here, you need the super jump, but I'm going to use a technique called wall jumping. Again, that's one of those hidden techniques that they do not tell you about. And wall jumping is used extensively by speedrunners. I mean, it basically breaks the game wide open for people. Alright, our first upgrade to our primary weapon. And honestly, the way this is designed, I think they almost intended you to figure out how to get this out of sequence. It just makes everything so much easier. I don't have to duck to hit those guys anymore. Gotta watch out here because they will grab you. And try not to fall in the water. The water physics in this game are extremely frustrating if you don't have the gravity suit. This is the infamous glass tunnel. A lot of people get stuck here later on in the game. It's one of the more esoteric puzzles. So, to, to get through here and access Meridia from this entrance, which you have to do later, you have to use a power bomb in here. It's almost become a meme lately. So, this elevator takes us down to Upper Norfair. The biggest hazard in Norfair is the heat. So, when you first enter Norfair, you won't have the various suit, and rooms like this will damage you. So we don't we don't want that right now. So we're just going to continue down. This is a power bomb door. Can't open it yet. And a missile door over here. With an E-Tank. Heck yeah. I will take another 99 energy. Thank you very much. Bomb these floors and go down here. <clears throat> and now we have... The high jump boots. Hell yeah. Getting high. <laughs> Okay, I, I just I just love the naming for these achievements. It never ceases to amaze me. Okay, and we'll grab this missile pickup. Heck yeah. Baby steps, as they say. Oh shoot, yeah, I do have to kill that dude. Come on. Another one of those gray doors. Through here, you'll let's see. Uh, now we have another save point, and I think that's a good place to call it for this episode. So we got some more achievements. We got a bunch more power ups, and we've made it to Upper Norfair. So I think this is a good place to call it. Again, thank you everybody who's tuning in. 
Um, I'm planning on doing another episode tomorrow. We'll see how far we get. So if you like this video and you want to see more content like it, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.